I'm just doing an update on the React CarPlay app. I know there's been a few issues with it around audio distortion and a few other bits. So the latest version should have fixed all of that and it should also give quite a nice performance increase over the older versions. It definitely feels a lot more snappy in terms of the audio playing, such as skipping forward and going back. So you can get it from the same place. So under releases on the repo, you can download the latest one. Latest one is version three currently, but there's a few other ways that you can install it that can make it a bit more painless depending what you want to do with it. So if we do the first way, that's cloning the repo. It'll do a few nice things for you, such as setting it to auto launch when your Raspberry Pi turns on. And it also takes care of your USB permissions to allow the Raspberry Pi to be able to talk to the car link at dongle. So to do that, if you click, click up the top right and then copy the URL, and then open a terminal window and we'll change to documents. And then I'll remove the one I've currently got just to make it, make it empty and the same as yours would be. So if you do git clone and then paste in the URL that you just copied and press enter, and now it will download the repo and all the files that are in it. It's not a huge one, so it shouldn't take too long. So once it's done, we can just check if we type in ls. You see it there, React CarPlay. So if we change into that, and we do another ls, these are all the files that is just clones. So the one that we're interested in is this setuppi.sh. So like I say, that will do the auto launch and it will also sort out the USB permissions. So to run that one, if we just do full stop forward slash setuppi.sh, you can press tab to auto complete. If you press enter, it will now go off. It will download the file, the app image. Then once that's done, it'll create the USB rules and then it'll also set up the auto launch. So it's all here. If we now change to the desktop, so the easiest way to do that is to go to your home with the, the curly hyphen and forward slash. Do an ls. And then we can change to desktop there. If we list again, We'll see we've now got carplay.app app image. Now we should just be able to do forward slash carplay.app image. Press enter. First time you run it, it will take a little while because it has to download the original APK to extract some parts. But then you should get this window come up. Now this is it playing. So I'm on VNC, so it's a little bit. Um, Little bit laggy. If I unplug my phone, you see the home page where there's a settings button. So if we click on that, we can change a few settings here. No, nothing major here at the moment, um, but we can change our FPS, turn it into kiosk. If it's not in kiosk, you can set your, your height and your width and left hand drive and also your DPI. There's also a camera here, which is the idea for that is a reversing camera. It's not been fully implemented yet, but you can use it. If you press the, the car logo icon within CarPlay, it will pop this window up and you can use the camera. So on this system, I've currently got it set up, not in kiosk mode, because it's a 1080p monitor, so it's kind of slow running that fast, that big. But if we just show you, if I tick kiosk and click to reload, it'll close down. If we rerun it, should then launch in full screen mode. Like I say, 1080 full screen is a bit much. So if we just change that back to non kiosk mode, click to reload, and then if we relaunch it, There is if, if I plug the phone in, it 
should then boot back into CarPlay. Cheers. If we play some music. One of the latest um, changes is in navigation now. If you navigate somewhere, and when the navigation starts, the audio dims rather than just cut straight off. Which is quite a nice touch. There's a few other things that are working since the original video, so now wireless CarPlay works. Uh, as long as you've got the wireless dongle. Microphone also works if you want to use Siri, if you just make sure the microphone's plugged in through USB, then that will work. Phone calls currently don't work, but that's next on the list. Um, and all of the packages that sit behind this are also available, so they're all open source as well. So if you want to embed this into your own car application, then, then you can do that, and I'll probably do a video on how to do that, as it's a bit more complex.